It is Saturday morning, 5 a.m. Suddenly, you are awakened by a loud, thunderous boom. Your bed shakes. You're still groggy. You reach for your cell phone to see what time it is. But it don't work. You get out of bed. You go over to the light switch and flick it on. Nothing. So you assume the power is out, and which indeed it is. You have just experienced an EMP or a solar flare from the sun. Yep, that is something that can happen, folks. We're going to talk about that. Not only can it happen, what already has happened. In 1859, September 1st, a massive solar flare on the sun took out telegraphs because that was all there was in 1859. Telegraph operators received electric shocks at their stations. Telegraph uh, lines caught on fire. Uh, people really didn't notice. Why? Well, nobody had vehicles. Nobody had electricity. Uh, they lived by candlelight, you know, lanterns. You can't experience an EMP if you don't have a grid system. Now, if that same thing happened today, we would know it. And boy, would we know it, and the world would be spun into chaos. Now, it has happened also uh, in 1989 with the, the Quebec blackout. A, a small solar storm caused a blackout for nine hours in Quebec, Canada. And I'm sure it's happened many more times throughout history. But if it happened today, what would happen? Well, this is kind of be kind of a scary video because you need to be scared about it because it is very possible. Could it be done by man? Yes, sir. It could be done with a nuclear blast in the atmosphere. Would have the same effect as a solar flare. It might be less, uh, you know, more regional, but nonetheless, it would have the same effects. It would knock out the grid system. Uh, a massive solar flare would probably do this globally, which it did in 1859. Now, in an EMP, electromagnetic burst, um, pulse, not burst, pulse, anything electronic fails. Your vehicle, your electricity, your phones, you will lose communication, transportation, everything will be gone. If there are planes in the sky, the planes will fall. This is what woke you up was a plane crash. As horrible as it sounds, that is reality. That is what would happen. So these are some things that we don't think about much, you know. But your whole world could change in an instant if one of these occur. So you need to learn how to survive a little bit. There are some situations, and depending on how old you are, you may, not, you may not survive. This is one of them. Yeah, you're thinking, well, how, how could the power going out be a dangerous situation? <laughs> well, think about that. Your cars don't work. The grocery stores are not refrigerating the meat. They go down. They won't open. Everything shuts down. Everything. You have no cell phone. The thing is, if it happens, you're not going to know what happened for a long time, if ever. You're just going to know there's no longer any power. And the world as you knew it is no longer. Now, we've all seen these movies, the end of the world movies. And a lot of them, uh, as far as what would happen, pretty much true. The things, the, in, in the order, things would occur. The first few days, probably two to three days, People are just sitting in their homes waiting for the power to come back on. After about three days when they go to turn on their water, 
and it no longer flows because it's no longer pressurized and it's not being produced to the towers or any of that, then people are going to start seeking other means of uh, food, water, shelter. Ah, the thought of not having coffee, though. Mm. Depending on where you live, if you live in a city, you're already probably seeing people in the streets. You're seeing, I mean, look, look how people behave today with political things. How do you think they're going to behave when they think the world's coming to an end? They're going to be looting stores almost immediately. Number one, because the power's out. There's no cameras. There's no law enforcement presence because they don't have transportation. It's just going to be chaos. The younger people that do these things without having a problem, they're going to think it's the greatest thing. They're going to be in there stealing TVs and stereos and things like that, video games, not knowing they'll never be able to use them. And those are the places you need to get away from. Now, I would advise, yes, hunker down for a few days, see if something changes, because you're not going to really know what happened, right? You're not, there's no going to be no news to tell you it was an EMP. You're just not going to know. If you live in a big enough city, maybe a scientist or some, something's going to pass the word. But will it get to you? You don't know these things. Now, like I said, most people will probably hang out in their homes as long as they can. But eventually, you're going to run out of uh, food. Some people are more prepared than others. Others, they, they shop every day. They don't have any kind of a stock. So they're going to be venturing out to find food soon. And what they're going to find is that the grocery stores have already been looted and wiped out. You've seen what happens when some event is coming. We've seen what happened in 2020. There's bare shelves. Well, that would be nothing compared to what, I mean, everything will be gone that is edible. Everything. So what you have in your home now is important. Now me, you know, I'm a car, I do carnivore. Obviously that would end because, yeah, you know, I'm not going to be able to get fresh meat unless I go out back here, which I'm fortunate enough to have thousands of acres back here and hunt. But I like to keep about 25 to 50 pounds of dried beans. You can live a long time on a batch of beans. Uh, I like to keep chicken broth, beef broth, things like that. Not so much that I eat them now, but they will last for years and it's emergency food. Those are always good to have. Canned goods, any kind of canned goods will last, you know, for several years. So if you've got food, you need to protect it, okay? Now, some people are dead against having self-protection. Well, you're going to need it then. How are you going to protect yourself? Because I guarantee you, somebody is going to want to take what you have. And if you don't have a means to protect yourself, they're going to take it. And you're not going to fend them off with a butter knife. I will tell you that. Shouldn't even have to mention what you need to have. To survive you need to have some emergency supplies such as uh, I carry I've probably got 10 they're called life straws and it's a straw you could put in any water source you could put it in the toilet if you had to and drink from it and it filters out 99.9% .9 of pathogens and it can filter up to 4,000 gallons so one of these straws would last quite a long time and that, those are very small. I, I had one with me. I was going to bring it up. Well, I obviously didn't. Uh, you just put it down in there and you drink from it and it's automatic. These have been around for many years now. So I always try to keep a bunch of them in stock. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have a bug out bag ready. Clothing. Put some things in it that you're going to need for survival. Can openers. Uh, I've got a big piece of tin foil that I folded up in a small square for cooking, for, for many reasons. Um, wire cutters, pliers, screwdrivers, things, your small things you could put in a bag that would be very handy, you know, in a survival situation. Law and order, yeah, it's gonna be non-existent after, you may have uh, military come in, 
But with no communication, the people will soon take over. And it's going to be crazy. And people are going to start getting out of the city. Because every, once everything is wiped out, they're going to want to get out of the city. And guess where they're coming? Yeah, yeah. But people in communities that are like this, we're going to be blocking off our roads. I'm actually in an awesome place because there's a mountain there and a mountain there. We are in between it and the road runs east and west. We can block off both ends. You ain't getting in because let me tell you, all the good old boys on this road, they're not letting you in. We are not going to let you in. You are going to have to do things you never thought you were capable of if you want to survive. And don't even need to tell you what those things, you know, you're just going to find yourself in survival mode. Could this happen? Yes. As I said, it has already happened. I, I would say the most likely scenario would be a solar flare rather than a domestic threat. But domestic threat is possible. If it's a domestic threat, it's unlikely it would wipe out, you know, the grid worldwide. But a solar flare most likely would if it was huge enough. Uh, like the 1859, when I actually researched that and, and I, I posed the question, if that event happened today, uh, would it affect us globally? And, and from what I gather, it would have. Now, it may not wipe out everything, but your vehicles, all the vehicles made today are electronic. Unless you have a 60s model or a 70s model vehicle, maybe some 80s. I'm hoping maybe even my 92, which isn't, but it does have an onboard computer. So it would wipe those things out. There would be no transportation. But even if you have one, people are going to try to take that from you. How are you going to drive that around when nobody else has a vehicle? You already know what's going to happen. You're never going to get out of a city with that. So if you have an older vehicle and you have a place you could put it outside of the city, that would be the better scenario. Uh, stash, you know, a lot of people, preppers and that, they, they have other off-grid properties and they, they've set them up for that purpose. Uh, a lot of people think people like that are crazy, but they're the ones that, you're going to want to go to in an event like that. Uh, who would you trust? There would not be a lot of people you could trust outside of your immediate family. Uh, you certainly are not going to meet somebody on the street and buddy up with them. You know, you might do that initially, but in the end, it's going to come down to every man for himself, every woman for herself. So trust very few people. Um, you may not even be able to get in touch with your own family. You may have, you may be separated from them. Uh, it's very likely that wherever you are, you're stuck there, and you're you're going to have to hoof it on foot or a bicycle. You know, a good bicycle to have in the garage is not a bad thing. But again, somebody might try to take that from you. It, it's going to be ugly if it happens. It's going to be very ugly. So everyone is going to be out searching for food, water, and shelter. Uh, there will be a lot of vacant homes, yes, but you're going to get the door kicked in eventually. Doesn't matter. What will the older people do? Because obviously if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you're not as strong as you once were. You're not going to be able to fend off a younger person. Uh, if, especially if you don't have any protection. I don't know. I don't know. I think most of us would say, you know, it's been a good life. Whatever happens, happens. I think that's what I would say. I'm still young enough I could fend off things and, and I could survive a little bit. Ten years from now, I don't know. You know, as we age each decade, we get weaker and weaker and it's going to be tough. Um, I guess you just have to put your trust in God and hope for the best. But the younger folks, it's not going to take them long to go into survival mode. And they're going to take what they want. There will be a few that will be helpful, but most likely it's going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And 
I hope it doesn't happen, but it could. So give me your thoughts in the comments. This was not meant to be graphic or anything. It really was meant to scare you because this is a possibility of things that could happen. And let's just pray that they don't. Thanks for watching. Happy trails.